Let's move on to the main thing we're going to talk about today, the climate emergency. Right now in Egypt, leaders from across the world are meeting to discuss the climate crisis at COP27. And you won't need me to tell you that the outlook looks pretty bleak. Um, it seems that at the moment we face a terrifying situation that is clearly getting worse and worse. Uh, and Britain's ruling politicians can't seem to decide if they're in the process or really whether they're sort of on the edge of it or outside it completely. And then I watch um, something which I think has sort of defined a large part of the political zeitgeist this week. It's not the first week it's happened. People from Just Stop Oil taking very, very direct action. And my instinctive reaction to what they're doing is that I'm in favour of it. To their credit, Just Stop Oil are becoming a central part of the discourse around the climate crisis. So I wanted to speak to someone from Just Stop Oil today. Emma Brown is part of the Just Stop Oil campaign. This week, as anyone listening to this will know, Just Stop Oil have ratcheted up the pressure by bringing the M25 to a halt. Emma, hello. Thank you for being here. Uh, hi, John. Thank you for having me on today. What's the intended message behind stopping the M25? We asked the government to sit down with us and agree to our demand, and unfortunately they didn't do that. We gave them time to reply. They just ignore us as they ignore all of the pressing issues that we have facing Britain today and ordinary people. All we're asking for is that the UK government stop licensing new fossil fuel projects. It's ridiculous. It's 2022, and they have a plan to open over 100 new oil and gas facilities by 2025. This is just a death sentence because not only is it completely trashing any kind of net zero strategy, it's also giving a terrible message to the rest of the world that we can just continue these extraction that is going to literally kill everything that we love and cause death and suffering on an unimaginable scale. And I do not want to witness that. I'm 30 years old. I don't want to witness that. And that is why we're doing everything in our power to say that, no, we are not going to consent to this. In terms of making the change happen, which in the instance you're talking about is that the demand that these these um, licenses for gas and oil exploration exploration aren't granted. What's your sort of understanding of how the mechanism works? So how do we get to ju from just stop oil disrupting everyday life to things changing? Do you have an do you have a vision of how that works? What's the sort of transmission between the protest action and then things changing? So I think it's it's raising the awareness of the issue. And even if people don't like what we're doing, more and more people are saying that they support the demand. And it's putting the government in a very difficult position where they are jailing young people rather than take the action required on the climate. And we just need to reach some kind of social tipping point where we understand that this is unacceptable and all our lives are in danger from this negligence. What's your view of mainstream politics? I ask you that because COP27 is going on as we speak. Politicians talk about climate change. One of the loudest voices about climate change in politics is on this podcast today. Do you think mainstream politics makes a difference? Are you interested in mainstream politics? I think that um, it's failed us because we have these election cycles that are short term, um, because, the, because lies spread faster than the truth. It has failed us. What I find incredible is that we have the solutions we have amazing people in engineering, in so many different fields, but unfortunately we've concentrated power and who gets to spend the money and decide the policies um, in, a, in a few people's hands. And I know that there are good politicians, but unfortunately it's just not working. And I think COP is an interesting example. Of course, it's so important that countries are working together, but Rishi Sunak doesn't need to go to COP to commit to no new fossil fuel licenses. He can just do that right now. It's a matter of domestic policy. Ed. I don't know whether you want to ask Emma a question or, or or respond to some of what she said. I mean, look, I can hear the passion in Emma's voice and I am committed to no new fossil fuel licences. I can hear what your motivation is, Emma. I, I've just got to say, though, I really, really worry that you are alienating people, not, not persuading them. I, I just got to say that to you. I mean, when I... You know, and I was careful to read about the experiences of people, for example, on the M25, trying to get to their 93-year-old dying relative or, you know, a, a, a funeral, and they can't get there. I don't think that's persuading people. I mean, look, I, I understand where you're coming from, but, you know, the, the, and I understand the desperation, but I think... I think you've got to think, are we, are we getting more people to our cause as a result of this? You know, and, and the problem is, you see, there are people on the right of politics who want to make this a sort of culture war and who want to say, 
oh, well, this is just simply about people saying you can't drive anymore or whatever. And obviously it's not, you know, tackling the climate crisis isn't about that. But I just say to Ed, what, what do you expect us to do with citizens then? Like, I appreciate the, I heard that the net, the net zero strategy for, for energy. And it is basically our demand. It's no new fossil fuel licenses and a, a decarbonized energy system by 2030, which is exactly what we're demanding. But are we supposed to wait for the next two years? We don't have time to wait. What are we supposed to do? Because the, the traditional methods haven't worked. Okay, and what okay, is, come on, on Ed, what's, she, what's Emma supposed not, to do? I'm, I'm not just saying just elect a Labour government. I mean, I do want to elect a Labour government, obviously, and I think that's vital. But think about the pupil climate strikers. They drew attention to the issue. They were taking time off school. Some people didn't like that. It raised the issue. It was a big deal, but it, it didn't have the kind of negative effect. You know, <laughs> profile on its own, yes, there's reporting of Just Stop Oil, but profile on its own doesn't doesn't kind of get you there. You've got to think, well, profile and what? What kind of profile? At the moment, the profile today is the fact that a motorcyclist, a police motorcyclist has apparently been injured. Uh, you know, there's questions about ambulances and fire engines. You say you don't stop ambulances and fire engines. I understand that. But inevitably, if there are roadblocks, it is going to potentially delay ambulances and fire engines. So my appeal to you is you know, think about not just profile, but impact. But listen, listen, Ed, Extinction Rebellion prompted a net zero strategy and the UK government to declare a climate emergency and therefore governments all around the world to do so. It works. At the time, it's unpopular, but then it works. I think that the Labour Party need to decide which side they're on. Are you on the side of the nurses? Are you on the side of the railway workers and the striking workers? Because they're causing disruption. They're causing short-term disruption to people for long-term gain. Of course. The same in, this, that is the same as what we are doing. And I would say you need to decide which side that you're on because we cannot just sit and be bystanders on this issue because it's going to kill a lot of people. And I would also ask Ed if he's ever tried vegan bacon. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm actually got an idea, which is John John Gummer famously fed his daughter a beef burger, and I famously ate a bacon sandwich. So we've decided that we're going to go on an advertising campaign for vegan bacon and uh, meat meat alternatives. Okay, and I promise you, Emma, we will have you back on, and we will have this conversation more because we've just tapped into a profound, very interesting, and very urgent tension that runs through politics and the climate emergency in particular thank you so much for being here emma it's really really appreciated appreciate thank you. it too thank you all the best thank you